We got some big exciting news coming to Diablo this week. We've got a big update coming to Diablo 2 mod Median Sigma XL. We've got the promised Diablo 3 PvP arenas finally coming to us in a StarCraft 2 mod. And Diablo 1 is being ported to another system thanks to modders. Who owns Diablo again? Hey folks, this is Riker with a gaming news wrap up video where we discuss the happenings of the week. This week's topics include how modders are keeping Diablo alive, the new Nintendo Switch Lite, some other action RPG news, and more. As always, discussion timestamps can be found in the video description below. But right before you jump ahead, just a quick reminder to ring that sub notification bell to be alerted of new Saturday episodes. In our first story, Nintendo has revealed the Switch Lite. Set to release September 20th, this is a lighter version of the Switch that does not have removable controllers. It's all built in like a PS Vita. It will allow crossplay with a regular Switch. It will not be able to connect to a TV. The IR motion camera and HD rumble features are removed, but it still has gyros. However, for games that do rely on the IR motion camera, you would have to buy a separate controller. Otherwise, it'll support all the games that support handheld mode. It'll have a slightly smaller screen, but still 720p, and it'll be $100 cheaper, $200 versus $300 for a regular Switch. Now, I own a Switch, and having that docked mode to connect to a TV, that's a big, important feature for me. But I can certainly see this as an option for people that intend to use their Switch as a more portable gaming unit. 33% cheaper is a big draw. That's $100 right there. Now, in other Switch news, according to an FCC filing, there will be some updated internal hardware coming to the Switch, specifically with regards to the CPU and storage. So to clarify here, any new Switches manufactured and sold will feature this new internal hardware. And some people are thinking that this means that future Switches will be more powerful, but that is unlikely to be the case. It's actually very common for consoles to undergo slight hardware updates over their lifespans. It could be a dozen even. And ultimately, there's no discernible difference in gameplay performance. Sometimes the new hardware is to deal with overheating issues. Sometimes it's to prevent modding. Sometimes it's to decrease weight. Sometimes it's to cut down on production costs. Now, we are expecting there to be an eventual reveal of a more powerful version of the Switch, of a newer Switch. But this will be filed as a different kind of thing. The filing with the FCC that we're seeing here is simply for an update to the existing Switch. In other news, we've got a new trailer for the upcoming Monster Hunter World Iceborne expansion. The expansion is coming September 6th. It's gonna have a host of content, including new monsters and subspecies, and it's looking really cool. Now, I've never played Monster Hunter World, but I remember being interested in the game when I first heard about it last year. Then it released on console first, and by the time it released on PC, I had forgotten about the game. I've been playing a little bit of Dauntless recently. I have a video on that if you haven't seen it, and I've been enjoying Dauntless. So my question to you folks is, do you think I would like Monster Hunter World? Seems like a really cool game, and it seems the expansion might be a good time to jump into things. But I turn the question to you, what are your thoughts, and would you like to see Monster Hunter World content? On to other news. Free-to-play game Warframe has received a new official cinematic trailer. And this cinematic was directed by Dan Trachtenberg, whose resume includes Uncharted, 10 Cloverfield Lane, and Black Mirror. The cinematic is really cool, and actually does a pretty good job at conveying what the gameplay of Warframe entails. In case you don't know, Warframe is a third-person sci-fi free-to-play action RPG, but not like a Diablo action RPG. It's an action game with RPG elements and shooter elements, and it's maybe a bit like a looter shooter. Anyway, do check that out if that sounds at all interesting to you. All right, next, on to some quick Game of Thrones news. It's not gaming related, I know, but I know there's a lot of Game of Thrones fans watching this. Author George R.R. R. Martin recently had a talk with Entertainment Weekly and gave us some more details on the upcoming prequel series to Game of Thrones. It seems he'll find any excuse to avoid finishing the next novel. So some of what was revealed about this upcoming spinoff prequel TV series is that Quote, the Starks will definitely be there, according to George R.R. R. Martin. To further quote, obviously the White Walkers are here, or as they're called in my books, the Others, and that will be an aspect of it. 
there are things like direwolves and mammoths. Now, he also confirmed that the prequel predates the rise of the Lannister family, but Casterly Rock will be there along with the Casterlys, the original inhabitants. The show will have an ensemble cast like Game of Thrones, and Westeros at this time will be divided into roughly a hundred kingdoms. This is obviously long before they converged into the Seven Kingdoms. Now, I, like many of you, was really burned by the ending of Game of Thrones, so I'm very skeptical about this upcoming series, but I'm hopeful. Next, on to an interesting conversation topic that came out of an interview about No Man's Sky with PC Games N. Director Sean Murphy stated, quote, Players are normally almost always right about problems in a game. That's the thing I always find. They're almost never right about the solutions, or they can never agree on them anyway. So they'll be like, oh, I don't like your inventory system, and then they'll tell you crazy things that they want you to do to solve that. Generally, that isn't the most useful thing. Now, I found this insightful coming from a dev, because there's recognition that player feedback is important and that players are very well able to discern when something is wrong. But you hear stories of games in which sometimes the devs listen to player feedback too much and just do whatever the players ask, and that ends up ruining the game. At the end of the day, game development is a talent and a skill, and people who play games and don't actively work on developing game ideas every day, like a professional, are unlikely to have better ideas than those who spend hours every day thinking about these things. And of course, I'm speaking generally, yes, there are exceptions. I'm sure there are many players who are actually devs or people interested in game development or people with a natural talent for these things. So if you personally feel that your feedback is super good, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about all the other people, okay? If making amazing games were easy, we'd have a lot more amazing games. On to some quick Overwatch news. A rather short dev update was posted to YouTube, in that we learned that the Summer Games are returning, but sooner than expected. We learned that there will be a weekly mini-challenge each of the three weeks of the event to unlock an epic skin. And we also learned that Hero31, quote, is going to be awesome, and quote, he is going to be released a little later than you're used to. On to some action RPG news, starting with Last Epoch. The devs put out a post stating that they are currently working on two upcoming content patches. The first one slated for early August. Then the one thereafter will be focused on adding new content to the game in the form of additional chapter content, that's the campaign, time rifts, new enemies, new skills, and more. The devs also revealed their intent to have a free demo of Last Epoch release in Q3 2019. And along with this, they announced that they will no longer have plans for an open beta toward the end of development right before release. The free demo will basically replace that. They also revealed that six new people have joined their team across May and June, and that they're aiming to release a public roadmap over the next couple of weeks so that we can follow along with their development progress. On to some very quick Torchlight news. The original Torchlight is currently free to acquire on the Epic Games Store. Say what you will about the Epic Games Store, but if you can get a game for free from it, you're really not giving them any money, so that's fine. Or, you know, if you'd rather just buy Torchlight, by all means do that as well. Torchlight is an action RPG developed by some of the developers of Diablo 2. It's a quality game, and the music is composed by Matt Ullman. It's very iconic, you'll recognize it because it sounds similar to Diablo music, but different. It's his signature sound, but it's not the same dark theme as Diablo. Speaking of Diablo, we'll end things with some Diablo news. First off, a modder managed to get Diablo 1 running on a Raspberry Pi. Link in the video description. And this is thanks to Devolution X. Now, last week we spoke about how a modder managed to basically reverse engineer the code of Diablo 1. And thanks to this, people are able to take that code because he's made it public and do whatever they want with it. And last week we spoke about 
how someone ported Diablo 1 to a mod at Nintendo Switch. Well, now someone ported it to a Raspberry Pi 4. I'm looking forward to when someone ports it over to a TI-83 graphing calculator. In other Diablo news, Egod, the creator of the Diablo 2 remake in StarCraft 2, The Curse of Tristram, has resurrected the Diablo 3 PvP arenas that were shown back at BlizzCon 2010. Now, there's some history there with the PvP arenas. So they were promised by Blizzard, and the game released without them, but Blizzard said they'll be coming soon after release, after launch. Diablo 3 released in spring, by summer, they were still saying, um, not yet, but PvP arenas are coming. And then, I believe it was by the end of the year that they said, yep, yeah, we just couldn't get PvP arenas to be fun and to work right, so here's just basically Diablo 2 style PvP. And my personal pain in this is that I was at BlizzCon when they were showing, when they had demo stations for Diablo 3 PvP. This was BlizzCon 2011, and I remember seeing the huge lineups, it, it, huge lineups to play, and I remember thinking, eh, I'll just wait a few months for the game to release, and I'll play PvP arenas then. So, EGOD's recreation of the PvP arenas will be coming to the Curse of Tristram on August 2nd. Again, this is through the free version of StarCraft 2 where you access the arcade, and this coincides with the launch of Beta 2 of the Curse of Tristram. Lastly, we have an update coming to Diablo 2 mod Median XL Sigma, which we've covered over here. This update will come July 19th. It will introduce 10 brand new sets to the game, as well as improvements to existing sets. They're cutting the requirements of every set bonus by one piece. So now five piece bonuses are four, four are three, three are two. The patch is also introducing revamped trap assassin gameplay and a bunch of other changes. And that's gonna wrap up this week's video, but do be sure to have checked out last week's video in which we discussed the poor reviews that the mobile Diablo clone released in China received. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on Patreon or YouTube and unlocking behind-the-scenes content like bloopers, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more gaming content.